Welcome to Juniper Networks Learning Byte. My name is Mario Finus, and I'm a lab architect with the Education Services team. In this Learning Byte, I'm going to be showing you how to deploy a virtual RAW reflector on a VMware ESXi server. So let's talk about virtual RAW reflect first. Virtual RAW reflector feature allows admins to implement RAW reflector capability using a general purpose virtual machine that can be run on a 64-bit Intel-based server or appliance. It works the same as a RAW reflector on a router, providing a scalable alternative to full mesh internal BGB pairing. Okay, and uh, VRR works in the control plane, and uh, it is qualified primarily as a RAW reflector with minimal data plane support. If you're looking for packet forwarding, MPLS VPN, and COS feature support, you might consider VMX. And lastly, VRR can be implemented at multiple locations in the network, which helps to uh, scale the BGP network with lower cost by placing uh, VRR virtual machines uh, in different locations. Okay, so it's a great benefit. Okay, let's talk about the uh, hardware and software requirements for VRR 9.4 R1, which is what we're going to be trying to deploy with this learning byte. You need a uh, at least the Intel uh, Xeon uh, and uh, or newer generation processor. Memory uh, for the default settings is 8 gigabyte for VRR, um, but if you want to have higher, uh, you know, scale, uh, you know, scenarios, you want to deploy uh, with 32 gigabyte memory. It can be deployed on local or NAS storage, and each, each VRR instance requires uh, at least 25 gigabyte of uh, disk storage. Hyperthreading uh, or any HCL, uh, HCL ESXi support or NIC will be uh, good for VRR deployment. And lastly, the software requirement for VRR at this point is ESXi 6.0, which is recommended uh, based on what I found in the Juniper website. But I, in my experience, it can be deployed in a newer ESXi as well. Uh, it just 6.0 is the most recommended at this point. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the VRR interface uh, configuration that comes default. On VRR, on VMware environment, connectivity to the VRR VM is accomplished by two interfaces. The first one is the management interface, which is uh, referred as EM0. And it basically performs the same function as the FXP0 interface on other platforms and it's connected to the out-of-band management network. The next one will be data interface, which is the EM1, and it terminates all the routing traffic and is connected to the data network, okay? And after deploying VRR, if you wanna add more interfaces, uh, you can do so by adding virtual NICs uh, uh, on ESX environment like you do with any other VMs. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's uh, show you the deployment, okay? So I'm gonna to connect to my jump host, uh, which has the VRR uh, appliance uh, already uh, deployed. Uh, and uh, let me, so I'm connected to my vCenter environment. So I downloaded the VRR 19.4 uh, R1.0 uh, on my machine here. So this is the OVA package. It comes as the OVA, which is very uh, helpful. Uh, uh, this is the one we're gonna be, uh, deploying okay so i'm gonna go to the server that i want to deploy and then uh, show you the uh, wizard i'm gonna browse to the uh, ova file here so we're gonna choose 9.4 r1 click next okay it's gonna go through some validation i believe of the ova package and you can also use the, uh, the vSphere web client as well, if you prefer that. But 6.0, I prefer using the, the Windows client. Give it some time here. Okay, so as you see here, uh, you know, it, it detected the Juniper uh, network uh, related information and the uh, VM metadata. Okay, so uh, click next. And I'm gonna give it a name, VR uh, Learning Byte. I'm gonna choose a folder. Let's uh, choose, uh, it was under the uh, class VM folder. Next, 
I can keep the default storage. I have a shared storage uh, configured, which is basically a NAS uh, running on a uh, NetApp filer. But I could also choose a, uh, you know, uh, a local storage. But I, I, I prefer the NAS storage because that gives me more mobility of the VM if I need to, more, uh, you know, be motion to another host uh, in the future. Okay, so that's that's always a better option if you have uh, the luxury to have an NAS. Okay, click next. And then by default, uh, you know, theme provision uh, is fine in most cases, but you can choose, uh, uh, you know, thick provision as well. Uh, if you if you if you use a uh, you know uh, uh, local storage, usually that's when thick provision comes up by default. But in this case, theme provision is fine by me. Uh, and then this is test, and I'm gonna keep the network default uh, for now, and I'm gonna change it later on. Okay. I always prefer to do that uh, when I deploy VMs. Uh, click Next. And you see the summary here. I'm going to click Finish. And now it's going to try to uh, deploy the, uh, the VRR on this uh, on the server. OK. Uh, while it runs, I'm going uh, to pause the video so that we don't waste any time. Okay, so our uh, VM is deployed. Now here is it called VRR LB on the server. I'm going to click on Edit Settings, and I'm going to choose the network for both. Uh, so the the first one is fine, which is the first network adapter is DC management network. I'll keep it as it is. And uh, the second one I can change to something else, uh, in a different VLAN, uh, or different port groups on the server. So you can. Um, uh, configure, uh, you know, standard switch port groups in your uh, ESXi server. Uh, it can be either uh, for the management. Usually, uh, you know, it, it's better to do the access ports. Like, you know, you can, uh, you can create a port group for the management network, and then you can create a separate port group uh, for the data plane, uh, depending on your infrastructure. So you can also use the distributor switch as well. Uh, based on my experience, that works as well as well. Uh, so you could uh, create port group in your distributor switch uh, on set the vCenter environment and then map your uh, network adapters uh, to the right distributor switch. As you see here, it's, it's, it got uh, connected with default, uh, you know, 8 gigs, uh, 8 gig, uh, 8 memory, 1 CPU, and uh, network adapters are E1000. So when you add network adapter, uh, more network adapters to this VM, you can uh, add them as E1000. Uh, uh, next, so that you don't have any conflict. Uh, I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to power on this VM. Okay. Going to open the console. Okay. So, uh, sorry. Okay. So as you see, it's booting up. Uh, I'm going to pause the boot process so that I don't waste time. And then when the, uh, the VM is booted, I will uh, resume the video. Okay. Okay, so our VM is booted. So I'm just going to try to log in uh, with the uh, default root uh, account. And I'm just going to go CLI. Uh, now I can configure. RLB. And again, configure the uh, EM zero interface.
Okay, and I can uh, commit. Let's see. So now I have an EM0, as you see here, uh, and EM1 is up, right? So that'll be my data plane. So uh, that's how you can deploy uh, a VRR on ESXi. Uh, and it, as you said, uh, you can add more interfaces if you need to in this VM. Um, just uh, they'll be uh, going through EM2 and, 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 and so forth, okay? So I hope this video helps. Thank you for watching the Learning Byte. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.